All right, we are with the fabulous Lauren Savigis, <laughs> Sayusa High School art teacher. Um, will you introduce yourself and then tell us about all of the classes that you teach and art programming in the district and your journey as a, a teacher and an art sure. teacher in the district? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Lauren Savigis. I'm an artist and an arts educator. I've been in the district now. This is my fifth year. I was at the middle school for four years and then I moved up here this year and I'm absolutely loving teaching um, students that I've known for the past four, five years. That's the best. Um, isn't it's it? amazing. Yeah. So I get to see them um, work as artists from age, you know, 12 all the way to 18. Um, that's pretty special. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a painter and a printmaker and a novice ceramicist myself. And up here I teach um, several classes. I have creative arts classes that have intermediate and intro students. Um, and then I teach a series of pottery classes with intro, intermediate, and advanced students taking those. And then I also have a ninth grade pride class. Okay. And you also work for, are a member of the Lane Arts Council. Do you want to I, talk about yeah, some of that work I as well? I used to work for Lane Arts Council. Okay. So that's actually how I got interested in becoming a teacher. I was working to help put artists in classrooms across Lane County. So. Um, making arrangements, writing contracts, setting up programming, and I thought I would rather be the one teaching. <laughs> and so I left there, got my master's in teaching, and then I've been at Sayus Law ever since. Um, I mostly worked in arts nonprofits, museum education, um, education technology through ISTE. I've worked Yay, with teachers ISTE. and schools <laughs> and grant programs and arts integration, um, after school programs, summer camps. Um, so I've worked in education for over 20 years now. In a and myriad of different ways. Yeah, in a bunch ways. of different ways. And now I am full-time um, teaching here at the high school. Yeah, and you're also a, a member of the Florence Regional yes. Arts Alliance, and you do tons of collabs with students and getting bringing the yeah. student artwork into the you gallery. Yeah. Our last virtual tour was with was that Fra. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I'm on the board at Fra, and one of our goals this year is to um, have more student artwork present, which is one of the reasons why I'm on the board. So actually myself and a student, a sophomore student, are going to start planning that today. So students will have the opportunity to show in group shows um, or sign up for a slot that they can show their own work for um, a length of time at the gallery. Awesome. Um, part of our philosophy here in the art studio at SHS is called TAB, or Teaching for Artistic Behavior. So this is my second year implementing TAB here um, in the district. And what it means is basically we work to teach students how to work as artists, not tell them exactly what to make. So it shifts that focus from like project-based and teacher-led projects to the students really driving their own um, interests through materials, subject matter, content matter. So we teach mini lessons, materials, artists, styles, techniques, and then when we go to something I call open studio, they have the option to utilize any of the materials available to them um, and work on any content images and um, uh, themes or values in their artwork that they want. Okay. Awesome. All right. So we are currently in creative arts. Um, what are we going to witness today with your students? Um, today is actually midterm day. So everybody is really working focused on finishing up their midterm piece. The assignment was to um, have a plan, was to work with a theme that is of interest to them, and was to create a variety of compositions um, to come up with their final midterm piece. So students are working really hard to get that done by the end of this class period. And um, I can't wait for you to check out what they've been making. All right, thanks for inviting us in today. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a tour and look over shoulders as students are finishing up their midterm pieces and we'll check out all of the brilliant artists we have here at Sayusla High School. Yeah. It's plain Sayusla. Yeah, you don't pay attention to the radio.
Okay, so here is one of our fabulous artists in Miss Savijas' class, Savannah. Do you want to introduce yourself and then we'll we'll take a look? Hi, I'm Savannah Petrovic. I'm a freshman. I'm in Creative Art 1 and I'm currently working on these three pieces. Okay, I'm going to scan around. They're so beautiful. So you're painting this one at the moment. Is this one a finished piece? Yes, this is a finished piece. This is my midterm. That's your midterm, and then you've got a third piece right over there. Um, can we talk about this midterm piece right now? You clearly like drawing like portraits and abstract portraits and yes. realistic portraits. So what do you... This one is the human body with the landscape inside kind of saying that you're one with like the earth and the sky and everything that you see. I love that. So, Most of my artwork well. is nature themed as well. Very much so. And this piece right here? Um, it's a portrait. It was kind of just for fun to add to my midterm a third piece of just a human portrait. A human portrait? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. This and then one this one. Well. Work in progress. Um, also a human portrait. I don't know quite what I'm going to do with it just yet. Okay, so you're laying the foundation for a face. Okay, we're here with another wonderful, fantastic artist. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about your pieces? Uh, hi, uh, I'm Hallie Burns, and I just really like nature and like uh, butterflies and stuff and insects. So I decided to paint them kind of as a Polaroid kind of picture. So they're intentionally supposed to look like the Polaroids. They yes. absolutely do. They're so cool. Thank you. And just go back and forth. Yeah. So I have two butterflies and two beetles for my midterm project. This one is still a work in progress. Okay. Are you painting from memory? Or do you use photographs? I used photographs at first um, until I started actually you know, getting further and then I just kind of went by memory. Kind of going from memory, yeah. They're absolutely gorgeous. I love the shadows, I love the colors. Thank you. And primarily acrylic painter as well, is that your preferred I'm media? actually, uh, I like watercolor painting better than acrylics. But. I'm a fan of watercolors and inks. Like I dabble in acrylics, but I, I tend to go towards watercolor. For my midterm, I tried to go out of my comfort zone with acrylics. It's fun to challenge ourselves as artists to do that. You always learn something new. It's like you add another little tool to your toolkit. But it's hard. It can be hard to it is. step outside of your normal. It's definitely challenging. Yeah. Okay, one last. Oh, look at the detail. They're gorgeous. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Yeah, of course. Okay, we're with another artist. Do you want to introduce yourself okay. and tell us about your piece? Okay, yeah. so I am Garrett Parker, and honestly, I've always loved cats, and specifically calico cats. So I made um, this artwork right here, like, of a fat calico cat because it's just adorable. It is adorable. Is this your signature? In the yeah. I love... I love people's artistic signatures. Um, this is a fabulous kitty. And um, do you, by chance, ever volunteer at the Oregon Coast Humane Society? Um, no. You should. And you could be painting kitty-themed artwork to raise money for that organization. Or this would be a great piece to display down at the Florence Regional Art Alliance as well. Yeah. Everyone loves kitties. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we are with Mrs. Ori, Sayusa Middle School art teacher. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and then tell us what we're going to see today in class? Yeah, so I'm Mrs. Ori, I'm a middle school art teacher. Uh, today we are going to see my fifth period students, mostly sixth graders, and they're going to talk about um, their Tim Burton selfies, so uh, proportion and value that they did. And then I think a couple people will tell you about our habits of mind uh, poster. We get our, I get to get out my uh, certificates and prizes for winning the poster competition for habits of mind. And yeah, it's a great group of kids. So okay. welcome. Thank you. And I also want to recognize the fact that you have done a million bazillion different jobs in the school district. Do you want to just say how long you've been working for Sayusla and the different jobs that you have held while if you've I been here. I can keep track of them all. So I think I've been here for, this is either my seventh or eighth year. 
I'm originally from Sayusla, so I uh, graduated from Sayusla Kindergarten through senior year here. Yay. And then I went to art school at PNCA uh, in Portland, and then I moved to California and came back. And since I've been back here, I was a classroom assistant for a while. I did the youth transition program at the high school. Uh, I taught the behavior third, fourth, and fifth grade class. I've done the talented and gifted program. I taught third grade online and now here I am, middle school art. Yeah. All right, will you both introduce yourself and then tell me about Habits of Mind and how you won your award? Uh, I'm Afton. I'm McKenna. And uh, our, our habit of mind we had for our poster was engage and persist. Okay, and what are the habits of mind? And like, habits, how do they apply to art class? The habits of mind are engage and persist, and stretch and explore, reflect, um, observe. develop and craft, envision, observe, express, um, and, and arts of the world. So they're like an artist's habits of mind. When you're yeah. being an artist, these are the things that you think about and do. Yes. yes. Okay, and then how did you win your award? Uh, we had, so we created a poster that was magnificent and yeah. outshone everyone. I'm joking, no. <laughs> well, you won an award, so it was fabulous. That won awards for Habit of Mind posters, uh, Engage and Persist. So we don't have our whole group here, but would you like me to put your... Yes. Okay. I want to feel like I'm You did win something. First place, Habit of Mind expert poster maker, Engage and Persist. All right, so tell me about the Tim Burton selfie project. The Tim Burton selfie portraits are where with the face, it needs, the eyes need to be exactly in the half lit way line of your face. So people, people, in most drawings, in most drawings, when they try to make the Tim Burton style, they'll always put the eyes way up on the forehead, but really, they're like right in the middle. Okay, Tim Burton, famous individual, author, artist, filmmaker, etc., has a very distinct style. So you were learning to create selfies in his distinct style. So yes, tell us about it. You would have giant eyes with a small nose and mouth, and a tiny pencil-like neck and square and shoulders. Okay, go ahead and explain the proportions to us. Well, the proportions are, the eyes are about like a, a hat, like in the middle. So usually whenever you're drawing Tim Burton style, you have to put like a very faint line in the middle and up and down. So you, so you, don't, so you don't make them too close together or too far apart and you also don't make them too high or too far down. Make sure, to, make sure to keep a tiny nose and mouth because if, if you make them bigger, well, they're just kind of weird. Make sure you have a very long and thin, thin neck. Um, most of the time, people like to do circles, but there are there are a bunch of different heads you can use for the Tim Burton styles. I'm pretty sure someone actually used a square as one of the heads. Yeah. Okay. All right, and then is this the example that Mrs. Ori drew for yep. you all? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here's her. Got to do, we got to do a sketch, and then we finished off with. We couldn't use any color besides besides like grays and blacks. Okay, so we are here with Ryan and Jesus and the rock pencil holder. Yes, uh, homemade, homemade. There we go. Do you want to just share? So you're learning about primary and secondary colors. So what's your task or your mission right now? What are you guys doing? Well, right now we're gonna mix the primary colors with each other to make secondary colors. Then we're gonna put those colors on this wheel. Okay, so you're gonna paint a color wheel with primary and secondary colors. All right, here is the fabulous Mrs. Cassie Keppel. Do you want to tell us all about um, all the many things that you do related to art uh, and then this specific club and then you have quite a few other clubs going on in the district as well. Okay, 
So, uh, the many things I do to art. <laughs> um, I am a children's book illustrator, and so I do a lot of illustration. Um, I grew up with a mother who ran a craft business the whole time I was growing up, so I dabble in a lot of different art mediums and playing with different um, art materials. But um, in the mornings, I get to start off with this joyous group of children, and, and there's different kids that come different days. Um, doing the elementary school art club and um, right now they're carving they're going to be doing pastels next and then we're going to do some basket weaving but we've got lots of lots of different projects planned different activities um, and then I also do the business of art club at the high school where they're um, working on creating new art but also towards what they would do if they were going to run an art business after they graduate. Okay, and is that the class that produces the little mini magazines? We do produce a zine. Um, the kids get to publish their work, and um, it's kind of exciting because they get their name out. It's one of the ways that they can um, link somebody to their social media accounts or their artwork so people can find them if they're looking for art. Awesome. All right, we are in Mrs. Keppel's wildly creative classroom and students are working on a whole host of different projects, particularly carving in blocks of foam right now. And it's also Halloween, so we have lots of friends dressed up in their Halloween costume. All right, so most often we start with a design before we get into our carving. Do you wanna say something about what you're planning on carving into your block? Um, maybe like a unicorn. Okay. Or like a giant frog. <laughs> a unicorn or a giant frog, one or the other. All right, what's your name and what are you carving this morning? Um, my name is Macy and I'm carving a uh, raccoon uh, in a hat on a broom. A raccoon and a hat on a broom. All right, what's your first name and what are you working on? My name is Maggie and I'm working on a mountain. I got a little flag in here and Surprisingly, it also works as a pencil holder, and this is the size of a pencil. <laughs> Very nice. Wonder. All right, what's your first name, and what are you working my on? My name's Cadence, and I'm working on a pumpkin in my carving, and I'm rounding the stem out. Okay, very nice. Excellent.